Welcome back. This is Captain Amy Coppich from Chesapeake Marine Training Institute and this time we're going to go over what we call an ETA problem. Now ETA problem means that you're starting at point one or point A and you're going to point two or point B, however it's worded. So we have two locations and initially you're going to have to figure out where those locations are and then it wants to know what time you're going to get to the second location. So if you um, are given two geographic points, just line those up and measure them. In this case, they give us a latitude and longitude of the first point, so we've got to plot that. So we're going to use our compass, and remember a compass has a divider point and a compass lead, okay? So we're going to plot out the first position, 3700.9 north. So we're going to come over here to our latitude scale at 37. And 00, zero means that it's not quite to zero 01. Each of these are one minute of latitude. Each of these individual little tick marks inside of that minute are tenths of a mile. So we're looking for nine tenths. So I'm going to put the point of my, my compass on the reference line. And I'm going to bring my compass lead down to the 00 0.9 point. Okay. I'm just going to kind of hold that there and get an idea where this location is, 7529.6. So when I look at the chart, and I'm going to slide this over just a little bit, uh, 7530 is located here, 7535 is here, so that means that 29 is back this direction. So remember that longitude gets higher to the left in the western hemisphere. So when I look at 7530, that means that this is 7529 and I'm looking for decimal six. So I could count backwards or forwards, whichever. So 30, this would be 29.9, .9, 0.8, 0.7, 0.9, 0.8, 0.9, 0.8, 0.9, 0.8, 0.9, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8, 0.8,
I've got three tick marks, so 15.3 miles is the distance between here and here. Now I need to take that to a D street, and we learned about this already. So I'm going to draw up my D street. Distance goes on top, divided by speed times time. My distance was 15.3 nautical miles. It tells me in my problem that I'm doing 12.3 knots, so that goes over in speed. Okay. Now I need to get my calculator, and I remember that when solving for time, distance divided by speed, because remember we worked the triangle from the top down. So I'm going to use my calculator, and I'm going to type in 15.3 divided by 12.3. And that's going to give me 1.244 hours. Now I know that I can't use that to do the math because that's in decimal form. So I need to get that into hours and minutes. So bring down the hour. That doesn't change. The 0.244 needs to be converted into minutes. When we're going from a decimal to minutes, we times 60. So, back to my calculator, 0.244 times 60, and I'm going to round 14.64 off to 15. So, one hour and 15 minutes is how long it's going to take to go 15.3 miles at 12.3. Now, it tells us in our problem that we're leaving at 0916. So, 0, 9, 16, leave a little space for your hours and your minutes. And we're going to travel 1 hour and 15 minutes. Put in your time T like we always teach you. Do the minutes first. Back to the calculator. 16 plus 15 gives us 31. 9 plus 1 gives us 10. This tells us that we're going to arrive at the NCA buoy at 1031, which makes C the appropriate answer. Now, sometimes you may be a little bit off, but the point of these problems uh, for the Coast Guard exam is to get as close as possible be, to be able to choose the correct answer. Um, in real life, obviously, we'd want to be as accurate as possible to where we're arriving to. Um, but for these exams, as long as you're within a minute or so, you should be pretty good because the next closest answer is 1035, and we were pretty close to 1031, okay? Uh, so this is an ETA problem. Basically, it involves measuring the distance between point one and point two, putting the known information into a D street, distance divided by speed. Anytime you have time as an answer, you're going to solve for time in your D street. Take your uh, hour, decimal hour, convert it to hour minutes by de multiplying the minutes, uh, the decimal minutes by 60, and then add that to the departure time that they give you in the problem. All right, go ahead and practice some of these in your workbook.